Hello guys and welcome back to this week's video. Today we're going to be taking a look at an IBM ThinkPad from 1994. That's actually 25 years ago. And I got it off of eBay for $21.50. It was sold as for parts not working so I think we should open up that package and see if we can fix it. Here we have the box with a total of 28 stamps that got it to my door. With our trusty knife let's open it up and see if the laptop arrived safely. Somewhat surprisingly, it was shipped with its bag just placed in a box. Here we've got the hefty power supply. It also came with its original laptop bag, with the IBM logo embroidered on it. So, here we have the IBM ThinkPad itself. It actually looks to be in pretty good condition, minus the little dent on the top lid. It also has all of its port covers, but the rubber feet on the base have actually started to melt. A nifty feature with this laptop is how you actually access the battery and the drives. Gently lifting up from the keyboard while pressing the screen latches reveals that they are all here. I was worried that this laptop would be missing parts as it was sold as not working. It looks like the hard disk and the floppy disk have never been removed since the latches are still stuck down and untouched. And I'm going to leave them like that. From what I understand this was actually used at the Daewoo Automotive Car Manufacturing Facility up to or beyond 2003. Also included in the carry bag was the manual for the Quicklink modem card which had a few IBM pamphlets from 1994 in it. There was also the modem dongle for the PC card. So let's plug it in and see if we can get it working. The original eBay listing described it as having some lights turning on when you fire it up but nothing showing on the display. Unsurprisingly when I flicked the power switch not a lot actually happened. It sounded like the hard disk was making noise and that the laptop was making an error beep. To rule out the possibility that the display had actually died, I plugged in an external monitor from the VGA port on the back. Straight away I got an image from both the laptop and the external display. It seems like the only problem was it being set to the external display mode. With that problem solved, I moved on to the next one. I was getting the error message 163, which basically means the CMOS battery has died. This is a fairly cheap item to replace, but due to the time constraints of this video, I couldn't get one in time. Thankfully it isn't actually a requirement for this laptop to have a working CMOS battery for it to function. With the BIOS essentially reset due to the CMOS battery being dead, I decided to configure it and try to boot to the hard disk. Unfortunately there didn't appear to be an operating system installed on the hard disk, possibly because it had been wiped. Using the built-in diagnostic tools it says the hard disk is okay. It also turns out that this laptop has a 486SX CPU, which might be either 25 or 50 MHz. Digging around online, I found the necessary software to install a fresh copy of Windows 3.1, which is what I assume this laptop originally had. Using a free version of this program, I burnt all the disk images to the floppy disks. This includes MS-DOS, which is a requirement to install Windows 3.1. First of all I tried out a Microsoft DOS boot disk to see whether the hard disk was actually detected. According to the FDisk program the drive was 164 megabytes in size. I tried exploring files on the drive but there didn't actually appear to be any. The setup began with a formatting of the hard disk. Once all the files were copied over I restarted the laptop and could boot into MS-DOS. I inserted the Windows 3.1 install disk and began the setup. I went with the express setup option. Every few minutes it would ask me to insert the next install disk. I entered my name and the setup installed the last of the files. So there we have it, Windows 3.1 is finally installed. As we do with every laptop video, I think it's time we give it a clean. Starting things off, I used an antibacterial wipe to clean off the lid of the laptop. A bit more force was required to remove some sticker residue. I also removed this sticker on the top and last of all I made sure that the IBM ThinkPad logo got the attention it deserved. Next I began blowing out the dust and debris from the keyboard. A little spray of eucalyptus oil was followed up with a wipe from a damp cloth. I used some q-tips to clean the hard to reach places. You'd be surprised how many germs and how much grime builds up on laptop keyboards. Time to get that display looking as spotless as possible. First of all I wiped some lens cleaner on the surface with an antibacterial wipe. Then I used a microfiber cloth to remove any excess residue. One of the latches that holds the keyboard assembly in place also needed to be repaired. A piece of plastic had broken off which I found inside the laptop. With a small amount of super glue I put it back in place. After letting the glue dry overnight I began to remove the rubber feet that had started to melt. This is actually pretty common with old electronics. Over time they literally just melt into a gooey sticky mess. 
At first, this seemed quite difficult. I eventually realized you could remove it in one piece if you pulled up the adhesive tape holding it to the laptop. With both feet removed, I cleared up the leftover gunk, which actually required a fair amount of force. After some hard scrubbing, all of the melted rubber was gone. I gave the base of the laptop one last wipe down before I installed some new feet. I bought these soft rubber adhesive pads, which I'll stick on each corner of the laptop. While they do look a bit weird, they are definitely very functional and are going to stop the laptop as well as the table from getting scratched up. With all the cosmetic issues addressed, let's try using this 25 year old IBM ThinkPad CS. At the MS-DOS command prompt, I typed in Win and Windows 3.1 for workgroups started up. A short time later, we were in. First of all, I added a wallpaper that definitely seemed appropriate for a 1990s vintage laptop. I remember when I was young, I used to play around with screensavers on our family's Windows 3.1 computer. It's kind of hard to see the Starfield one on this laptop since the display has definitely degraded over the last 25 years. There are three pre-installed games. Solitaire is basically exactly how it is on every version of Windows. So is Minesweeper, and I don't actually know how to play Hearts. Paintbrush, or Paint as it's more commonly known as, provided many hours of entertainment as a child. I think everyone can say they've drawn something similar to this when they were younger. There are also basic writing tools included in Windows 3.1. I think it's time we tried out some of my favourite DOS games. Since this laptop has no sound card, I'm limited to only using the built-in PC speaker. The original Duke Nukem runs very fluidly, however the motion ghosting on this display is unsurprisingly horrendous. Commander Keen also runs great, but is very disorientating while scrolling through the level. I actually totally forgot that Windows 3.1 came with antivirus software built in. It's quite funny seeing the names in the virus list. Someone was definitely an Iron Maiden fan. Aside from the interesting way you access the drives, there are some other interesting design quirks. Sliding this lever across will allow you to padlock the drive bay shut. The keyboard on this laptop is also quite nice to type on. Using the pointer nub as a mouse is also a great experience in my opinion. Overall, for a 25 year old laptop, I'd say it's actually aged pretty darn well. I'm also very glad to have been able to clean it up and gotten it working once again. Thank you very much for watching. If you've liked what you've seen, definitely feel free to leave a like. And if you want to see more, definitely consider subscribing. I'll see you in next week's video.